In this video, we'll use the final value theorem for analysis of our Laplace transform functions. In particular, we will use our Laplace transform function to calculate the final value of our variables. So the final value theorem says that we can calculate the limit of y of t as t goes to infinity as the limit as s goes to 0 of s y of s, the Laplace transform version. So this means we don't always have to do the inverse Laplace transform in order to learn anything about our system. One limitation of this method is that it only applies for bounded y. And this could be a problem because we don't always know ahead of time if our variable y is going to be bounded. Let's apply this method to the blending process, which is shown in the figure. We have two streams that flow into a well-mixed tank with one outlet stream leaving, and we're most interested in controlling the mass fraction x leaving the tank. So the Laplace transform version for x in deviation variables is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6 over s plus 4 times 10 to the minus 4, and then we multiply that by w1 prime of s when we have a change in that disturbance variable. So let's consider the same step input w1 prime of s that we have considered in previous examples. A step input of height 0.1 and then the Laplace transform of a step is 1 over s. We can go ahead and calculate the limit of x prime of t as t goes to infinity as the limit as s goes to 0 of s, x prime of s. Let's go ahead and just plug in. We can simplify this expression by canceling out these s terms and get 7.5 times 10 to the minus 7 over 4 times 10 to the minus 4 as s goes to 0. And we can also rewrite this as 1.8 7, 5 times 10 to the minus 3. And this is the same result that we saw in earlier videos by actually calculating the time dependence of x prime. Now we can apply a similar analysis to the volume in the tank. The problem is that we know from previous videos that the volume in the tank is not going to be bounded under this step input. If we increase the inlet flow but we don't change the outlet flow, then we will have a linear increase in the volume in the tank. So the assumptions of the final value theorem do not actually apply. In the blending process, we want to control x, which is the mass fraction of species A leaving the tank. We also have dynamics for the volume. So we had previously computed that as 10 to the minus 3 over s times w1 prime of s, where w1 prime of s was a step input of height Point one. And so we could go ahead and calculate that term s v prime of s is 10 to the minus 3 over s times 0 0.1 over s times that s. And so that gives us 10 to the minus 4 over s. Now the limit of that term as s goes to 0 according to the final value theorem would be infinity. Now it turns out that in fact the volume in the tank is unbounded. It grows linearly as we increase the flow rate in but don't decrease the flow rate out. But really the final value theorem does not apply in this case. So really any result that we get uh, here is really unreliable. The volume at long time is not bounded, but what we can do is to define the rate as a new quantity. So R of t is the rate of change of volume, dv prime dt. And that will be bounded under a step input in W1. So we can take the Laplace transform to get R of s equals s v prime of s minus v prime of 0, which we've been assuming is 0 here. Now we can apply the final value theorem to the rate r. So limit as t goes to infinity, r of t is equal to the limit 
is s goes to zero of s, r of s, so that is equal to the limit, so s goes to zero, s times r of s, which is s times b prime of s, 10 to the minus 4 over s squared, and that's equal to 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed per second. So this now is a bounded value, and it tells us that the long time value is 10 to the minus 4. Now, we really knew that based on our inlet flow rate, but we are able to define this new variable, r of s, for which we can apply the final value theorem. And that will be helpful later when we look at multivariable control.